through 2011, 12, everything got laid off. You know, the big government stuff that was going on. Went through a separation. Just everything just gone and then in 2012. You know, even in the midst of me saying, God, I'm done with this. Even in the midst of me going back out and hanging out. Ain't no shame in my game. I'm, a, I'm, 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 I'm transparent. Because my past is transparent. See, not only is this man of God my friend, my, but he's my pastor. And he's a spiritual father to me. He has imparted into me. It ain't got nothing to do with the fact that I'm older than him. It has nothing to do with the price of tea in China. It has everything to do with the wisdom of God inside of him. Opportunity to say, okay, Lord, I'm getting it together. I'm getting on board with this. This is where I need to be. Listen, if you know this is where you need to be, then stop shucking and jiving. Yes. Come on. 
Yes. It is time out for shuffling jobs. No more, no more, no more, no more. Because God has been speaking this thing, and he's been speaking this thing. He's been speaking it. He's been speaking it. You know why? Because he loves you. He don't want you to miss out. He wants you to be in position. In the right position. Airline people announce your name. They give you a few minutes. Mm. Oh my God. And sometimes you see some people running up to the gate. Mm. And they hand their board pass and they get on. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. 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 Choose today. Yes. Are you gonna choose the Lord? Or are you gonna choose yourself? Mm. Are you gonna allow God to be responsible for you? Mm. Or you wanna be responsible for you? Mm. Now you can look at this and say, Well, I've tried to be responsible for me. And it ain't worked out. So if God be for you, who can stand Myself, that I, me, and my wife, she'll be here permanently in October. Lord, hurry up that October. Right now. Let me close my eyes tonight and let go home. It's October. Glory. I will tell you, me and Cynthia Blair will help you fight. You know why? Because we're part of this ministry. Yes. I'm submitted to God, therefore I'm submitted to this man and this woman. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I love this man. Yes, sir. I love this woman. Yes, sir. I support them. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And I ain't going to let nobody just run up here and start shucking and jiving and messing around with them. No. Every five foot six of me will rise up. Mm. my life, that saved my very life, yes. that got me back on track, that got me back in position, yes. Yes. and because I was in position, I was able to Come on. get my pride. We've known each other since grade school. Mm. Yeah. I was in the fifth grade, she was in the fourth grade. Mm. I was flirting. I sure was. <laughs> That's great. Gave a note. Wrote a little story. Will you be my girlfriend? Check the box. Yes or no. Put 60 cent in there. <laughs> you know, receive money back in the day. You know what I'm saying? You know, 60 cent in 1975. It didn't take you long. You take chips, candy, soda. Still have a little change over for the next day. <laughs> but God. When I got off the plane, July 2nd, 2014, and saw her, that was my first time seeing her in 39, 40 years. Last time I saw her, we were kids. She had the little pigtails and the plaid jumper. We went to the Catholic school, we went to St. Ingbert. I tease her all the time, I still see the pigtails and the plaid jumper. But God, because of this man, stand when it was easy, you could have gave up. You could have threw in the towel. Even people came and said, brother, why don't you take some time off? Just step away. You know, 
People accuse him, saying, well, he must be doing something mm. wrong. Mm. He must be. Yes, wow. Mm. Mm. Open, public display. Come on. Everything. But something yes. meant more mm. inside of him oh, no. than the stuff yes. that was going on. Yes. And that was the heart of God. meant more inside of him than the stuff that the enemy was throwing at him. The love for God and the love for God's people. Because he stayed on course. God was preparing his good day. he was going through. Yes. See, when God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, mm. see, he brought them out yeah. to bring them in. Yeah. Right. See, God, is, see, we have to understand the plan and purpose of God. See, God brings you out. He just don't bring you out and say, okay, there you go, baby. I'm, I'm, I'm done. Mm. Come on, sir. But no, 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 no. See, 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 God, He brings you out yes, yes, yes. so He can prepare you mm. as a given sacrifice. See, He takes you. Yes. Mm. See, Paul talks about that foundation in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, 6 through 12. He talks about, I've already laid that foundation, which is Jesus Christ. Mm. Yes. Now you build upon it. Now what you decide to build upon it is what you decide to build. You have a choice. Gold, silver, precious stones, and wood, stubble, and hay. I said, as you begin to build upon that, and all of a sudden it said, the day will come when it's tried by the fire. And see, we all have to go through that fire. Mm, that's the process we don't like. But it's called transition to be in position. Mm. God wants to put you in position because he wants to brag on you. Mm. He wants to put you up in front so he can say, look at my son. Look Come at my on. daughter. See, he, see he, 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 he don't want to share his glory with nobody. So, as you're going through, he'll, he'll, he'll move all those prideful people out of your way. Because you know, some people like, oh, I tell you what, I remember and I did this and that for you. Remember that? No, no, no. God said, I, I ain't got time for that for you. This is my goal. This is what I'm doing. Come on. Yes. 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 So we took you, Pastor. Mm. Mm. And he said, I got so much outside of this man. Mm. Mm. Got to take him through the fire. Mm. So he can see how great I am, mighty I am inside of him. Mm. Yes. 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 See, like you said, yes. the devil had his best shot at you. Mm. 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 You know what God showed me about you, Pastor? Mm. 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 You want to listen to this? He showed me, Pastor, kind of crushed me, pouring his heart out. But in the midst of the pain, he was still praising God. Mm. He was worshiping God. Mm. In, the, in spite of. And he showed me this figure, big figure, standing over you like this. <laughs> The author of confusion was confused.
ain't got no agenda. Have your way. This is God. We are here to appreciate a man of God. See, there are so many people that say, God this, God that, blah, 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 blah. But uh, James say, you know, faith and works. You know, you say you got faith to show me your works. You know, show me something. Let, let me see something, see. Just don't tell me you've been through something and you ain't been through nothing, see. See, I know. Because when I came to this church, I told him, I said, look. I'm tired. I'm tired of playing church. I'm tired of dealing with, 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 with folk. Folk is crazy. I'm tired of it. I said, if I don't get what I need here, I'm done. And he looked at me and said, okay, bro. I accept that. But if something goes wrong before you leave, let me know. He said, okay, fair enough. And he kept encouraging me. He kept pouring into me. I could call him just bald. I said, Brother Johnny, go say there's a ram in the bush. That's all he said. Yes. And when we sat down one day, and he began to share with me all the hell that he was going through and went through, my mouth dropped. I said, how in the world can anybody call me through that hell? And like Elder Paul was saying Friday night at the leadership dinner, Elder Paul said, there's no way I can quit. If our pastor, our example, surrendered everything to God and kept his heart right before God and preached the heart of God in his pain, then who am I to quit and get out this pain? This is our example right here. Open the doors up. 
And you can be standing there wondering, man, I should have gotten that flight. Wow. Then, as the engine's revving up, you know, I know a little something about aircraft because I worked on it when I was in the Air Force. Excuse me, you want me people, but yeah, I was in the Air Force. <laughs> <laughs> Aim high. As that engines rev up, and it taxis out, and it gets right there, the top of the tarmac, where it's getting ready to go down and take off. There's a thing with an aircraft called the point of no return. Mm. As the plane is going down the runway and it's building up speed, it gets to a point where it cannot abort the takeoff. It has to lift up. It has to. It cannot abort regardless of circumstances or situations. It cannot abort. It has to lift. Put yourself in position. Whatever adversity it is, do not abort. You cannot abort. You are in a position to fight where you cannot abort. As I was saying, God brings you out to bring you in. He brought the children of Israel out. They cried and they cried and they cried and they finally got delivered. God took them through the Red Sea into the wilderness, they still murmur, complain. Now, listen to this. They cried out. We gave up the weeks, mm. the onions, mm. garlic, ham, pinto beans we gave up. Oh, 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 oh. Get home. <laughs> 
church here. See, we allow God to be God where the Spirit of the Lord is. There's liberty, baby. There's liberty up in here. We want you to be free. You going you stick around here, you are gonna be free. You cannot be in bondage and stay up in here. You cannot do it. It's free folk up in here. You want to stay in bondage? And free is gonna run you right out. We ain't gonna have to say nothing. It's just gonna carry you out of here. The two is just like all the world. It just can't mix. You have it in you, Jesus, to run this race and to fight. Guess I need to give y'all some scripture. Give y'all some scripture. This all right? Yes, yes, yes. Mm. This is Jesus. This is the Lord. Mm. I was telling my wife, I said, baby, I said, I know how it's going to start out and how it's going to end. I just don't know what's going to happen in between. I said, well, I'm just going to trust God, you know. I said, let me tell you something. Like I said, I wanted to take myself out this time last year. I'm not going to lie. I lost everything. Job, house, everything. Lost it all. was mad at God. I wanted to give it all up. But I kept fighting because of this man. And let me tell you something about the fight. You have it in you to fight. See, God is not going to put you in a situation that you can't handle. See, the promises of God in him are yea and amen. amen. Now listen to this. God said, no longer will I dwell in a tabernacle or a tent made by hands. He says, I'm going to dwell in my people. So he's inside of you. So if the promises of God are in him, and yes and amen, and God dwells in you, then guess where the promises are? Guess where the promises are? The promises of God are inside of you. God is carrying you into your promised land. Now they went over. That's good. Moses said, go spot the land. I had already given it to him. I've given you this land. They saw the land. They came back. Oh, yes, it's flowing. Milk and honey. The fruit of it. Mm, 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 great. But, so you gotta watch out for the people. They start off on the good foot, and then they say, but there's some giants in the land. But God has already given you the land. It's easy. You have the land. You keep you, walking in your promise. Giants have a shot at you. You can figure out the giants. That's all God wants you to do. He's giving you something. Go in and fight. Now think about this. This your baby young man? This is your daughter? Now let me tell you something. I'm somewhat of a smart guy. I may not be all that smart. And Dylan and Cheyenne, that's, that's y'all baby, right? I, I know that. Now, I don't care how big and bad I might think I am. But if I walked up and they didn't know, if they didn't know me, and I was some cuckoo head person out the street, and I would come up and try to take this man's child from him, try to take Dylan's child from him, I guarantee you something inside of them yes. would rise up. Yes. Yes. And I ain't having this. Yes. This is my baby. Right. 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 Am I right? Am I right? <laughs> it don't, wouldn't matter how big and bad I was, I thought I was, how much I huffed and I puffed. Something inside of them would rise up because something means something much more to them than me, and that is that child. Yeah. So when God impregnates you with his vision and come his on, plan man. and his purpose, yeah. come on. why in the world did you let the enemy come up and say no? You can't do this because of what you did last year. You can't do this at all.
Giants represent? Yes. All it represents is you beating the snot out of them. Yes. And not only that, yes. but then once you defeat them, now you take their spawns. Yes. Yes. You got most right. stuff. Yes. Yes. You got most stuff. Yes. When Jehoshaphat found out that all these people was coming after him, he called a fast. Everybody got together. On one accord, they fasted and they prayed. And the prophet showed up and revealed the plan of the enemy to them. He told them which way they was coming. And the prophet told them, said, the fight ain't yours. Just position yourselves and seek the salvation of the Lord. Jehoshaphat said, believe in the prophets and you shall prosper. You know what? That word believe, it means to nurse on what God has said. Like a child nursing on its mother. Mm. It's receiving the nutrients mm. that the mother has. Go ahead. Mm. Go ahead. When you nurse on the things of God, you're God, receiving mommy. the nutrients mm. that God has for you. And it goes deep down inside of you. And it causes you to become pregnant. Mm. And it causes that seed. See, that's where we get pregnant to. It causes that seed to burst open. Mm. And the roots to go deep down inside. So that you can rise up to be a man and woman of God that he has called you to be. And then the story goes on. Where they sent out the praise team. Yeah. They sent out the praise and worship team. And they said, oh, I forgot what they said. Like, Our God is merciful or something to that thing. You can read it. Second Chronicles 20. 19, 20, somewhere around that area. But then the Bible said, when the praise team went out, he began to praise and began to worship God. He says, now, this very minute, the Lord calls the ambush to come upon the enemy. When they began to fight each other, they become, they became confused. They killed each other. Jehoshaphat and his people spent three days gathering the spoils. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Lord, Lord, gathering the spoils. God wants to bless you all yes. and abundantly. Yes. But the question is, will you fight? Yes. Will you get up and fight? Yes. Yes. Do you want to fight? Do you want to surrender? Your will. For his will. Yeah. 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 I'm going to turn to Luke 22. Mm -hmm. This is the author and the finisher of our faith. Told you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. This is all about him, baby. This is all about him. See, I, I just don't care no more. All I care is about the plan that the Lord has for me. That's what I care about. Don't nothing else matter. When you put yourself in a position where you fight and you worship in the Lord, problems don't even matter anymore. God had to get me to that point. Beginning of this year, you know, last week Pastor talked about in the worship and whatnot and how some people stand to the side. That was me when I first came here. I didn't want that because I was like, oh, I see what's going on. I don't want to surrender. But God had to get me to that place where I had no choice but to surrender. Where it was just me and Him. And in my apartment, in my bedroom, I began to throw my hands up. And I began to pull out and I began to cry. And I just began to worship. And it started getting a little better. I used to watch wrestling. We had a good guy and a bad guy. And the bad guy would be beating up the good guy. My favorite was the ultimate warrior. So he'd come running into the ring and fight me. And all of a sudden, you get the crowd behind you. My Bible says there's a cloud of witness that's cheering you on. That's encouraging. You can do it. Don't give up. 
don't give up. You're in a position where you praise every person. And you get up. Throw your hands up in victory. Let your hands be. Let's look at Jesus. Luke 22. Is this okay? I'm almost done. Starting in verse 39, it says, Coming out, Luke 22, 39, coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives as he was custom, and his disciples also followed him. When he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that ye may not enter temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Verse 43 says, Then the angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. I said, strengthening him. What's that all about? So I looked it up. That angel showed up not to take Jesus out of the adversity. Mm -hmm but put him in a position where he could endure the adversity. You've got to endure. God has you in position to endure the adversity. I am a living proof. Our pastor is definitely a living proof. God will strengthen you he will send forth someone to minister to you while you're going through to get you because you can't come out of there. You got to fix that giant. You got to slay that giant. You got to slay that giant. I don't care what that giant is saying. Just like David. Yeah. David, the little shepherd boy. You had the men around him that was supposed to fight, train to fight, dress to fight, look like they could fight. But when Goliath showed up, belly ache, rah, 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 rah. 40 days. After guess what 40 means? Judgment. Now God said, it's my time. Yes. My time. But I'm going to defeat this giant with something that the enemy ain't expecting. A little shepherd boy. Yeah. Yeah. Red head freckles. Yes. Those who didn't know who Opie Taylor is know what I'm talking about. When they ain't really showing sure. <laughs> You know, ain't me, ain't Barry. That's what David looked like. Look like he couldn't fight. So then we looked at him and laughed. But something inside of David, because David said, Lord, you taught me how to fight. Because I defeated that lion and that bear. And who is this uncircumcised to defy the armies of the living God? David knew his covenant. He knew where he stood. He knew he could fight. And he defeated Goliath. And then the armies rose up and they began to fight. Sometimes you need somebody that to get up and fight with you. We're going to fight with you here at this church. Amen. 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 We're going to teach you to get your guards up to give us up. We're going to teach you. We're going to teach you. I'm going to show you how to karate kick the enemy. We're going to do it all here. We're going to handle some business here. You ain't in this alone. All right, back to um, 43 where it says, Then the angel appeared to him, gave him strength, where he could get through this. But then right here, and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. He prayed nonstop. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling to the ground. Let me tell you something about this word, agony. It means combat. It's not the fear that makes one shriek or flee, but the fear which makes one tremble in the face of the issue, here's the key right here, yet allows you to remain and face it. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. 
will allow you, in spite of how it feels, in spite of what you're going through, you will be able to stand there and face it without getting scared running with your tail tucked between your legs because God is a man of war. God is an instigator. He is a troublemaker. God likes to start some stuff, but God will finish some stuff. See, when God starts some stuff, He's going to use you to start some stuff. Because he's not coming back down here to start. He's going to use you to start some stuff. God is a man of war. If he dwells inside of you, then guess what you are? You're a man of war. Yes. You have the ability to fight. You have the ability to go through that agony. To stand there and endure it. And face it because he said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Never leave you nor forsake you. So he's not going to leave you there. See, that's what the enemy does. See, you think about all these people. If you listen to the news, they say all of a sudden it's like, I heard something, blah, 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 blah. And then when I shot him, when I killed this person, then all of a sudden it's like, how did that happen? Because, see, that's what the enemy does. He comes, he consumes your mind. Then all of a sudden when you're done doing what he wanted you to do, he steps back and says, I got nothing to do with this. And then you're standing there, and now all of a sudden you're condemned, you're hurt, you're feeling bad. Now you got oppression, depression, you got all his elements coming to attack you. Now you want to commit suicide. But our God will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He will never put you in a situation where you are defense. He will always have you in a situation where you can stand up and fight. The question is, will you fight? God is an instigator. You don't believe me? Let's go to Job. Job chapter 1, verse 6. My version. The sons of God, born before God, the devil was with them. Now, God engaged this conversation. God started this conversation. Go to the next verse, Deacon. God started this conversation. God instigated this. He started this fight. <laughs> he started the fight. Yes. I told y'all God was a troublemaker. He an instigator. Amen. He started the fight. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Ask him a question. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth and walking up and down in it. Next verse. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered? <laughs> have, look here, boy. Have you even taken thought? Now, see, this reminds me of when I was growing up. Because when people would come talk trash to my uncles, they say, Man, boy, let me go around and get my nephew. I got a nephew that'll take you out. You know how we did back then. I got a nephew. My nephew will take you out. But God said, have you considered my servant? God made that person. He said, have you considered mine? This is my servant. Have you considered my servant, Timothy Jones? Have you considered my servant, Timothy Jones? Have you taken time out of your busy day while you walking to and fro throughout the earth? Have you considered, have you taken thought to my servant? He belongs to me. He's mine. I got all the faith and confidence in him. Yeah. That he can do above, abundantly, above yeah. all. That he thinks I ask according to some power that works within him. Yeah. So again, have you considered my servant? Now let me tell you something. That word servant talks about a worshiper. Have you considered my worship? A worshiper. That there is nothing. Now this is God bragging about his servant to the devil. And the devil's sitting there entertaining this thing. He entertaining this thing. There is none like him in there. A perfect and an upright man. One that fears God. And is true evil. Now this is God. Telling the devil about his servant. My servant. 
Not your servant. This is my servant. Next verse. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for now? We all know that. And we know everything that came up on Job. It even came back where they had a conversation again. God asked him the same question. What do you mean? So we spoke about there. Have you considered my servant? Job faced all of that and stood even in the midst. His wife said, curse God and die. His friends, you must have done something wrong, boy. All this stuff to come up on you. But something inside of Job said, no, though he slay me, yet I will trust him. Let's turn there. Job 13. transition to put you in position so you won't miss the door closing to the aircraft so you'll be on board when the plane goes yeah, down the runway right, yeah. and it gets to the point of no return and when the plane take off you don't have to worry about nothing because you're on board yeah. you're on board yeah. verse 16 he also shall be my salvation for a hypocrite could not come before him see somebody that's playing church they can't stand before him and talk this kind of hoo-yah. They can't do it because they're going to tell on themselves. See, Job loved God. He feared God said this about Job to the devil. Have you considered him? He fears me. He loves me. He's an upright man. And the devil still came at him. See, Pastor, you're an upright man. You fear God. You honor God. The devil tried. Big Tim. Ah. <laughs> and you need to sit at Tim Jones. That was weird thing. This guy should be made. The crazy person in spite of the tears just pouring out your face. That was just confused. Because he did everything at you. Something that grew inside of you and gave it up. And that's God. That's Jesus. Yes. Jesus inside you. See, Paul said, if I leave to be with Christ, hey, that's a good thing. Yes. But it's more needful that I'm here. Because yes. that's good for you. Yes. Yes. 
person. Hold the hands of Serena. Mishael and Azariah. Those names are attributes of God. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, Babylonian names. It has to do with worshiping the one God, sun God, whatever. Yeah. That's what the enemy tries to do. He tries to call you something else so that you can agree with him. Yes. If you agree with him, then you say, okay, I got you now. Then you start walking into it. Some of these kids that's involved in all these games. Mm -hmm. somebody up. We call him gunslinger. <laughs> so guess what he don't think he is? He's gunslinger. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna start acting it out. You know, playing with his, trying to see how quick he is. <laughs> Let me tell you something. When you're running a lifestyle like that, it's always somebody bigger and better than you. Yes, always. The sequel in your own God's side. Yes. Great as he is. That's in you that he that's in the world, no matter what it is. Amen. Show on God's side. Yeah. Amen. Anyway, so you all know the story. Old King Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebi, he made a decree. When you hear whatever, you'll bow down and worship this idol. Ananiah, Mishael, and Nazarite said, We ain't happy. You can say whatever you want, King. You will not bow down. Our God will deliver us. And even if you don't, we still ain't surrendered. We still not. So he got mad. He said, let me turn the fire. Seven times higher. Mm -hmm. He didn't know what he was doing. Seven is the number of God. Complete perfection. Oh, God. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
that's what's going to happen here. People that have bound you, people that have hurt you, This day, we salute you, man of God. Yes. Lord, 